Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we are fleeting the battleship, which means that one of the most important processes is happening right below our feet. Behind me, these low structures are the pump house for dry dock number three. The main dewatering pumps, all three of them, as well as the two stripping pumps are all down there. So those are what are pumping out the water from inside the dry dock. Because it's so loud and dark down there, I'm gonna stay up here, but let's see what it looks like. The pump house is a multi-story structure. We are on the left-hand side of the dry dock if you're facing the river out that way, or the right-hand side of the dry dock if you're at the river facing inland towards League Island and the city of Philadelphia. On the opposite side, my right, I guess that's your left, that is where the culverts are that let water into the dry dock. There are large tunnels underneath of the dry dock and in the two wing walls that are letting water in and out. So as we were flooding dry dock, we open those valves, it lets water in on that side, it goes through the tunnels and down into the grating that's underneath of the dry dock. If you've come for a dry dock tour, you've gotten to walk on those gratings. So the water comes up through the gratings and fills the dry dock from the bottom up. This part takes several hours, so we've got some time to go and watch a documentary while we wait for it to happen. Today's video is sponsored by Magellan TV, an online streaming ad-free documentary service. They have a large and growing collection of historic documentaries, including a ton of stuff related to World War II. If we had opened the valve all the way, could have probably flooded the dry dock in uh, just a couple hours. We did it uh, much slower than that because we want the ship to safely rise off the blocks and we know her bow is going to come up a few feet before her stern does, so we don't want her shifting too much. Uh, so this was a slow, multi-hour process flooding the dry dock. Once the ship was floating again and we'd maneuvered her forward, we've already done a separate video on the actual fleeting process, then we could start dewatering the dry dock. That takes place from this side where we are. Inside the dry dock, roughly parallel to where the pump house is, there's a big hole in the floor. More accurately, that is a well. That is the lowest spot in the dry dock, so all of the water runs to there, and that's where the lower parts of the pumps are drawing the water from and pushing it through the pipes underneath of where we're standing and then back out into the river. As we descend the stairs here, right in front of you is the first of the three pumps. These pumps are all original to the dry dock, which means they were installed sometime between 1917 and 1921 when the dry dock was being built. These motors are absolutely massive. Each one is 1,250 horsepower. Just for uh, reference, your car is probably about 200 horsepower. The largest motor on the battleship is a 300 horsepower motor that rotates the turrets. So we can rotate a uh, 2200 ton turret about four degrees a second with a 300 horsepower motor. We're using something four times as large to dewater this dry dock. It runs off of 300 amps, which is probably more amperage than your entire house draws. The battleship does have an individual pump outclass there in that at full power, uh, we're drawing somewhere around 3,200 amps off of shore power. Uh, more realistically, in a normal day in Camden with just the lights running, the battleship's drawing about 150 amps, so half of one of these pumps. Each one runs off of 2,300 volts. The battleship runs off of about 450 volts of power. Uh, your house, just about everything in there, runs off of 110 volts. Individual lighting circuits and power outlets in your house are probably about 15 amps, maybe 25 amps for the big ones. Uh, you might have 240 voltage power for things like your washer, your dryer, uh, big appliances like that, and those might be on 50 amp breakers. The breakers for this are not the little switches you have in your house. It's something more akin to what Dr. Frankenstein would throw in his castle, a, a big switch. Each pump can dewater approximately 105,000 gallons per minute. 
which means that uh, it should take about six hours to dewater the entire dry dock at that rate. Assuming that there's 37 million gallons of water in there. Since we've got six hours to wait, let's go watch some documentaries. My favorite one I've seen so far is Surrender Aboard USS Missouri. That's a documentary that Magellan TV has available. They've got an entire one on an Iowa-class battleship. If you're interested in watching that for yourself, ad free, and get your one month free trial at the link in the description below. So dewatering actually didn't take as long as we thought it would. Uh, it should be six hours running one pump, and we did only run one pump instead of all three. There isn't really any benefit uh, to running extra pumps and you are burning a lot more power. With 105,000 gallons per minute, running one pump was just fine. The reason it didn't take nearly as long as it could have is because while this dry dock will hold about 37 million gallons of water, depending on what the river level is, the ship is displacing literal tons of that, 47,000 tons of that. So all of the area that the ship is occupying doesn't have water in it. So the, the area where the ship was went down significantly faster. And then once we got to the lower section where it's just keel blocks, there's 90% more water there. So it took significantly longer to dewater that last section. Uh, regardless, it ended up taking something like three or four hours total. The pump house is actually a multi-story structure that runs down deeper than the dry dock floor so they can access the tunnels down beneath where the water is actually being sucked into. The motor at the top is spinning a shaft. That shaft is about five stories tall. So about halfway down, there's a bearing to keep the shaft straight so that as it spins, it doesn't start to warp or whip or cause any other inefficiencies that could damage the pump itself. There is a graded platform down that far that you can access where you can uh, get to the bearing for things like lubrication, inspections, and things like that. It's really neat. Uh, this space is both cool and dark. It's very cave-like, uh, a lot of concrete walls because it's made out of concrete like the rest of the dry dock. And uh, so the, the, obviously there's water in there. It's kind of moist. So there's some really interesting growth down there that's accumulated over the last 103 years that this space has been in use. Uh, it's really interesting because that growth is concentrated around the incandescent light bulbs. That's where there's enough UV light and heat to allow for the growth. But notice as you go outside of the light, there, there is significantly less moss and other leafy growth uh, in that area. So that was really cool to explore. All the way at the bottom is the pump itself, the casing that's lower than the level of the dry dock that contains the impellers that are actually drawing the water in and forcing it out to the river. So the big motors up here take electrical power to spin, which spins a shaft, which then spins the impellers down in the pump, which is what is forcing the water out. Really simple principle for an engineering marvel that's over 100 years old. Down there is also uh, the lower part of the large ball valve that you open that lets the uh, pipe that connects that area to the river open up. You have to open a valve to let water into that space to start flooding it so that the pumps, so that the pump impellers are actually in the water, they're not airbound. And then you have to open this other valve to have somewhere to force that water to. These valves are all opened up from higher platforms with the uh, big handles that are connected by shafts down to the actual valves themselves uh, that connect them to gate valves in the lower section. So that they're threaded as you're spinning it, it's basically opening up a gate in the opening. So if you want to open it all the way, you can pull the gate all the way up. If you don't want that much, uh, you, you can leave it partially open and it'll still be able to force some water through it. Since we were expecting this to take significantly longer than it ended up taking, I still have some time with my night to finish the documentary on the surrender on board USS Missouri. If you want to watch this too, remember there's a link in the description below for Magellan TV. That will give you a 30-day free trial to watch Surrender Aboard USS Missouri. And 
the more than 3,000 other documentaries that Magellan TV has on file, each 4K with new content added weekly. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourself. So we really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description for ways you can donate to support the museum and to support the sponsors that support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.